Peanuts and Cracker Jack? It's beyond that at the ballpark. These days, teams are obliging fans with greater vegan options. Now meat eaters can take a break from their heart attack, and vegans have something else to root for when their team is in last place. Like in San Francisco, where the baseball may be hell, but the vegan food, heavenly. Our list of the top 10 ballparks for vegan fare, next on The PETA Podcast. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo, your host for this behind-the-scenes look at PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. Here we talk to the key players at PETA and the movement and ask them about how animal rights change their lives and how they stay motivated to make the world a better place for the animals. On today's episode, it's the food of summer at the ballparks, PETA has a top 10 list that teams and not the animals are dying to be on. Competition is fierce for the top 10 spot. It's not enough for these ballparks to just have a vegan burger and and think they're they're going to pass with fans these days. They need to have really creative, interesting stuff that's going to keep people coming back and, like you said, get out of their armchairs and come to the park and enjoy some delicious food while, you know, watching their game. PETA campaigner Amber Canavan will go over the best places, and it's all beyond just burgers and hot dogs. Thanks again for joining us here at the PETA Podcast. This is Episode 70 in our second season of shows. Please share a link with friends and let them know the animals have a voice on the PETA Podcast. And if you've just found us, welcome. And keep binging. There's lots to listen to on the PETA podcast. Now, if you've been following the news, you know PETA's push to stop the cruelty in racing is ramping up as another horse has died at Santa Anita, one of the nation's premier racetracks in Arcadia, California. 26 horses have died. And now PETA is calling for a suspension of racing nationwide so that the rules implemented by Santa Anita can be discussed and accepted in all racing states. PETA continues to work with the Stronic Group, Santa Anita's owners, and with the California Horse Racing Commission to strengthen the rules, which were already groundbreaking, so that no horses die on the track. In New York alone, where the Belmont Stakes will soon be held, and where PETA has 350,000 supporters, 15 thoroughbreds have died while racing or training so far this year, and 148 died in the last two years. Yet neither New York nor any other state has enacted the rules that the Stronic Group and the California Horse Racing Board have put in place and continue to strengthen. There is no excuse for this inaction. So PETA is calling for the suspension of racing nationwide until every racing jurisdiction matches or surpasses what California has done. Trainers, owners, and veterinarians have recklessly controlled racing and imperiled horses for too long, and those days must come to an end. Now, one of the things people don't understand is that this isn't a matter of horses taking a bad step or falling accidentally. This is a matter of horses who are already slightly injured but are being sent out to race when they aren't fit, risking further injury and even death. If you keep horses whose injuries are masked by pain-killing drugs off the track, the deaths will stop. But let horse racing continue status quo, and almost certainly, the deaths will continue. For background on how the issue has evolved, check out our racing episodes, numbers 60, 59, and 67. Remember, if you're on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate and review the show. It helps the algorithm know that PETA has a podcast on the issues important to you. There's also a link to a survey in our show notes. If you're so inclined, we'd love to hear your feedback. Now, if you really want to help the animals, you can always hit the Donate Now button at PETA.org. And if you're high-tech and have Amazon's Alexa, it's as easy as saying, Alexa, donate to PETA. And now to our episode. If baseball is America's pastime, 
Ballpark food is an indicator of where the American palate is heading. We're going beyond nachos with the cheese whiz. Now we have real non-dairy fake cheese in some ballparks as the veganization of America has become a real thing. For nearly 20 years, PETA has compiled a list that shows how America's taste is going cruelty-free. There's still some parks like the Cubs Wrigley Field that are sticking with their Chicago-style hot dog, you know, with the sport pickle and the celery salt. Wrigley isn't in the top 10, nor is Fenway Park in Boston, National Stadium in D.C., Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Meet strongholds all. Maybe they'll crack the top 10 next year, but they'll have to be inventive. This year, the park that has a 24-inch hot dog has some of the most inventive vegan fare as well. Just not a 24-inch vegan hot dog. But this year's top 10 shows a real move to diversify ballpark food choices. Vegan. Cruelty-free, gourmet even, and fun. Peter's Amber Canavan helps me go over the list of baseball's top vegan offerings for 2019 on the PETA Podcast. Well, PETA was doing the vegan-friendly baseball parks ranking um, before uh, anyone knew what vegan was. We started this ranking in 2002, Mm. and it was actually just the um, vegetarian ranking. And back then, we were lucky to find two or three major league ballparks that even had a veggie burger or a veggie dog, and most of them had eggs or dairy in them. Now, we've got ballparks just falling over themselves, competing with each other for the, you know, the tastiest and, and most inventive um, ballpark classics that they can find and, and serve them vegan versions. Yes, you know, I have to say this, that back in 2002, um, it wasn't, look, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, so I'll get my bias out of the way. And they were really, at that point, they were kind of like patting themselves on the back for having a vegan hot dog when no one else did. And it was easy to get on that list, I would imagine, back then. But now it's a little harder because I'm looking over the list when others are saying, hey, we're vegan too, or we're better at being vegan, right? Mm -hmm. That's progress. Yeah, the ballparks that made the list overwhelmingly, all of them, it's not just enough for them to have a veggie burger or a veggie dog now. Uh, In general, to even be in in the running for the top 10, they need to have both a vegan burger and a vegan dog. They also have to have some other things that are going to impress us, like... um, nachos with melted vegan cheese or desserts um dole whip sundaes uh was one of the things that made one of our parks make the list um and hosting vegan nights so ballparks will host these different um specialized events uh with free games uh beforehand and a couple of parks are experimenting doing vegan nights and uh we're looking forward to more parks doing those in the future now Now, did a bunch of vegans at PETA who are baseball fans actually go to the parks? How did you come up with the list? We do have staff all over the U.S. who are fans who gave us input. Uh, We'd also work with the food service providers at the different um, parks that are, you know, working right there, um, inventing a lot of these menu items. Um, and we also worked with, a a group called veggie happy and they, they run a ranking, like a review website for sports venues across the country. Um, not just, not just ballparks, but football stadiums as well. And let's go up and down the top 10, cause it's kind of interesting and people around the country, or if not around the world, they can be, uh, uh just tantalized by this list. Number 10. Chase Field, the Arizona Diamondbacks. I was there a couple of years ago, and it seemed like a big warehouse with a baseball stadium, you know, when they closed the uh, the roof. They are on this list. What, t- what can you tell me about Chase Field? Well, Chase Field does have the vegan burger and vegan field roast hot dogs, uh, but what helped mm-hmm. get them in uh, this year was their Beyond Meat Mediterranean chicken wraps. You just don't really see vegan chicken on the menus at ballparks almost anywhere else in the country. Yeah. And beyond seems to be really going crazy. I mean, their stock is uh, going crazy. People are 
uh, going to Carl's Jr. and getting the Beyond Burger, and now they're they've got a foothold in the ballparks. That sounds great for for Beyond right? and for vegans. Yeah, we're we're loving seeing all the um, not just Beyond burgers everywhere, but the ballparks are more often putting vegan cheese on there, so you can actually have a cheeseburger. Now, I noticed they have field roast, the vegan dogs. I love the field roast products, and and I uh, I love the the fact that a lot of these ballparks have the field roast burger, which I like better sometimes than um, Beyond Burger, which you know tries to replicate beef. But as far as taste goes, I I love the field roast products. Uh, at Chase Field, they also have the Camelback Burgers, and there's no camel in the Camelback mm-hmm. Burger, right? Yeah, that one is topped with a brown sugar truffle ketchup. Jalapeno mm. relish, avocado lettuce, herb mustard, cucumber, and crispy onion flakes. Yeah, we're not just getting into this uh, vegan thing. It's it's actually vegan gourmet almost, right? Yeah, I don't even know what sugar truffle ketchup tastes like, but I would be excited to try it. <laughs> all right, that's number 10. That's a Chase Field. So all you Arizona Diamondbacks fans. Number nine, Kauffman Stadium the Kansas City Royals, and they have a lot of Beyond Meat products there. They do, yeah. They've got um, the Beyond Meat sausage uh, with sauerkraut on top. They got Beyond Burgers. They've got uh, coleslaw made with vegan mayo, and they also do the baked beans without any of the bacon in them. So you can go to Calvin Stadium, root on the Royals, who they were good. At one point, and then they started selling their team off for parts. So I'm not sure how good they are uh, again. But the vegan menu, good. All right, they're number nine. Number eight is T-Mobile Park in Seattle, and they, of course, uh, they've got field roast because that's their home turf, right? They've got both the field roast franks and burgers. They've also got the Beyond Meat Italian sausages, uh, steamed traditional uh, bao buns. Uh, with bok choy, tofu, mushrooms, and vermicelli noodles. What also excited us about T-Mobile Park is they're uh, one of the ones that's hosting a vegan night. Tickets are probably going to be on sale in the next couple of months. So you can go there and and get a pregame vegan meal before the game starts. August 6th is vegan night. That sounds like you would go and wear your vegan, all, all your vegan finest to and eat all the vegan stuff and root all the baseball players who are playing with leather gloves so (laughs) not exactly perfect but close we're we're working on that right we're getting there yeah all right so that's seattle they got beyond meat italian sausages field roast which is a great product franks and burgers they got avocado toast and they ethnicize it a bit with the bao buns with bok choy, tofu, mushrooms, and that's a, you know, for those people who like more exotic ethnic fare, the bao buns at T-Mobile Park. All right, number seven. Now, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, so when I see that number seven is the L.A. Dodgers and Dodger Stadium, tell me what's good about Dodger Stadium's vegan menu. Well, the, the Dodgers really went off on their own this year with tempeh. So tempeh is mm. like a fermented um, soy um, product. And, in you know, we love it when the ballparks are repping the Beyond Meat at every meal. But uh, tempeh is also something you don't see very often on ballpark menus. They've got tempeh tacos, tempeh nachos with vegan cheese. Um, a burrito baseball with tempeh and black beans and pico de gallo. And in addition to the, you know, they have vegan sausage and Beyond Burgers. Yeah, a burrito baseball. So it's sort of like a, a uh, yeah, a bowl with all the burrito stuff. So you don't have the the calories from from the uh, the tortilla. But the tempeh, now that's kind of interesting because People who are tempeh fans know that uh, tempeh uh, used, was the base of the, I don't see this product very often, but the old fake and bacon, right? That was, uh-huh. that would, do you remember that? Do you remember fake and I bacon? I do. 
you can still find it on on the store shelves now. But yeah, that was tempe. But I like it because you you get that kind of cross cut granular part of the bean or the fermented soybean, and it's a uh, it was tasty. It was smoky. So I'm I'm curious now. This may be the only thing that might get me to Dodger Stadium to see the mm-hmm. Tempe tacos and not the Dodgers and the Tempe nachos with the vegan cheese because. You know, you can't watch baseball without having nachos. You might as well get vegan nachos. And that's not everywhere, vegan nachos. Yeah, that's, uh, as far as I know, that was the only ballpark that's serving up tempeh. But not vegan nachos. Or do other parks have vegan nachos? Oh, vegan nachos. Yes, other parks are starting to serve vegan nachos. It used to be you would just have to get salsa or guacamole. But more and more parks nowadays are realizing the market for vegan cheese um, people are just dumping dairy left and right including cheese so you can get your nachos with some uh, vegan cheese instead all right so that's number seven dodger stadium at number six is yankee stadium so you can be a vegan and wear pinstripes at yankee stadium and what do they have there at yankee stadium that's special They've got the Beyond Sausages, which are exciting for everybody. They've also got the Field Roast Burgers and Franks. And they've also got another um, vegan Guadalupe burger. They've also got vegan sushi and edamame. And um, deep fried avocado bites. That's another one that we haven't seen on any other menus this season. A deep fried avocado bite? That's right. Uh, all right. Maybe I'll go up to the Bronx when I get to New York and 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 check out uh, the vegan fair at Yankee Stadium. All right, they're number six. Uh, we're at the halfway point, and at number five, the Cleveland Indians Progressive Field, I guess formerly known as Jacobs Field, but Progressive Field because uh, they've got the naming rights. What are the vegan options in Cleveland? Progressive Field has a grilled cheese from a very popular, well known grilled cheese restaurant called Melt there. Uh, Melt is uh, a delicious stop if you're ever uh, in town, but you can also stop at the stadium and get it there. They've also got vegan tacos. And another unique item to Progressive Field is they serve uh, vegan ice cream from Sweet Moses, which is another local ice cream shop. They've also got a field roast dog and stuff like that. But, you know, you're starting to get a little more of the local flavor here. This is what I noticed that if you have a good uh, local presence or a restaurant that serves like, I mean, vegan ice cream, you can get Ben Jerry's. You can get, there's all sorts of vegan ice creams out there. But if you have a local place like in Cleveland, Sweet Moses, uh, that's a little plus, right? Yeah, that's something, you know, worth seeking out for sure. Yeah, and then of course the vegan grilled cheese from Melt, which is very popular in Cleveland. I think they might be, they might be franchise. I'm not sure. I think I might have seen Melt some other places too. But that's that makes Cleveland's Progressive Field number five. We're at the half halfway uh, mark of our top ten. At number four is uh, Oracle Park, the Giants, and I would rank them high, but. I, I've got to see what you know what's better than them. But what 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 do you say makes Oracle Park, formerly AT and T Park, uh, of the Giants special? Oracle Park's just got a whole bunch of stuff. They've got the field roast franks and burgers. They've got a super duper burger, which is a vegan version of their cult burger. Uh, they've got vegan nachos made with a local. Called Loca Foods, so it's a local brand vegan cheese company. So they make a cheese dip, a queso style vegan cheese dip that goes on top of their nachos. There, uh, they have, they've also got gelato, falafel pitas and dolmas, uh, garlic fries, acai bowls, cha cha bowls, rice bowls and noodles, um, and stir fry with tofu. Yeah. So just you know, a wide variety of of Totally different foods that you can choose from, all vegan. Yeah, Oracle Park. Here's the thing about Oracle Park. In the old days, say in the last eight years, since 2010, say, you you know, they had a good team and you can go for the baseball. 
And now you have to go to Oracle Park for everything else because the baseball is not very good. And so it, I'm hardened to see this list because, it, as I said, in 2002, when PETA first started this list, it was just something to say, hey, we got a vegan hot dog, right? Or we have a veggie hot dog. And now, acai bowl, uh, vegan gelato, super duper vegan burgers. The vi- the field roast, they had a field roast back in twenty, I think twelve. Now the baseball's so bad, the food has got to be excellent, <laughs> and it really is. And you mentioned you mentioned that they have their own garden, and in fact, there is a garden out in center field. Or look, this is how bad a fan I've been. I haven't been to see the Giants live. I watch them on TV because it's a schlep to the ballpark, but, and I make my own vegan food, but I, when I, I went to the games, their center field garden was fantastic with all the green salads. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, it was, it would be great to ignore the game and just go there to eat. And and the baseball was good back then. Now, it's like go go for the food. And oh, by the way, here's baseball. So, uh, I'm not sure how how good of a marketing scheme that would be. Like, you know, our our, our yeah. players well they suck, gotta... but you can yeah. <laughs> come yeah. get some great vegan food. It's their saving grace. The baseball is bad, but the food is great. Well, look. It's hard, so it's hardening to me to see Oracle Park at number four, because that means there are other places that are better in PETA's estimation. So at number three, well, who's number three? Target Field, the Minnesota Twins. They've also got the basics, right? They've got the field roast burger and dog. They've got a couple different kinds of vegan burgers and franks. Those are just standard if you're going to even be in the running. For PETA's top 10, you got to have those. But what really kept them in the top three, and they, they were number one last year, they've got the Herbivorous Butcher. This is a local vegan butcher shop. And they've got Italian sausages, sriracha brat. And then they've also got a vegan cheese pizza, which you can't really find at other ballparks either. I actually didn't. Uh, City Field in New York have a vegan pizza? City Field. Mr. V or something? They've got a, they've got a, um, a, it, it's a more of a burger stand. I, I think mm-hmm. they had a vegan pizza available last year and we weren't able to confirm it's available this year. It was one of the parks in, in New York City had vegan pizza last year and we weren't able to confirm it was still available. If somebody's got some yeah, insider that, knowledge and says that it is, then we'd be happy to add it to the list. Well, that's a big deal, though, to have vegan cheese pizza. So Target Field has that. But here's the other thing that I noticed from their list. They also have Hot Indian Foods Vegan China Rice Bowl, which so they ethnicize it up a little bit. They've got baked cauliflower and an ancient grain chopped salad from Hell's Kitchen. So once again, the locals getting in the act. And I, I would think that knowing that the herbivorous butcher has their sausages at Target Field, maybe a place like Butcher's Son in Berkeley might call up the Giants of the A's and say, Hey, you know, we can, you know, we, we need our products there. At the ballpark, so, but this is good. So Target Field, that's a destination for me. This yeah, one. and Target Field also has vegan ice cream cookie sandwiches, which I'm a big fan of ice mm. cream sandwiches. So, if you ever make it out there? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, Target Field in the summer. Yeah, uh, ice cream sandwiches <laughs> are great for those Minnesota summers. Minnesota winters I for vegan oh. ice cream. I'll, you I'd know, go, you, you got to eat it in every season. Yeah, every season, you get a okay. pass. <laughs> uh, ice cream sandwich for all season. All right. So number two is City Field. Okay. So they may, I don't know if you, they have the cheese pizza or the vegan cheese pizza, but they were good enough to beat Target. They're at number two. Tell me what City Field has for the New York Mets. Well, new this year at City Field is Marty's Bieber Burger. So it's a 
a dedicated mm. vegan concession stand. They've got the Beyond Burger with melted vegan cheddar cheese, a uh, shroom steakhouse burger, again, with melted mo- vegan mozzarella and sautéed mushrooms. They've got the Beyond Bratwurst. They've also got a couple other different brands of uh, vegan burgers and, and veggie dogs. They've got the Tokyo Vegetable Roll. And then this was exciting. They had Dole Whip Sundays and Floats. So Dole Whip is, is mm. this frozen dessert. People tell me it's not ice cream, but I swear it is. And they have a bunch of different fruity <laughs> flavors that you can get in a Sunday or a float. So, so what makes them number two is this 100% vegan concession stand, Marty's V Burger. And it sounds great. I mean, that would make, I mean, the Mets aren't doing so well, but that would make City Field the destination for me. Just go out to Queens, get the vegan food, go out and enjoy the, the sunshine, see people throw a ball around and eat a shroom steakhouse burger with melted vegan mozzarella. That, that sounds like an, an interesting time. Yeah, and, you, and with the dedicated stand, you don't have to be guessing about what you're ordering. You can just go up there and pick pretty much anything from the menu and get something good and vegan. You know, it's it's hard to figure out where things are. And if you know it's a dedicated stand, like uh, Marty's V Burger is on the field level behind Section 104. You know it's there. You know, you, you go there before the game or during a long stretch when the Mets aren't doing so well. And you get your vegan, your vegan uh, Jones uh, satisfied. Okay, so now that was number two. Now we're at number one, and number one is Globe Life Park in Arlington, the Texas Rangers. Why does Globe Life Park? Why do the Texas Rangers deserve to be number one? Well, Globe Life really impressed us uh, two years ago when they made number one because they also have a dedicated vegan stand called Ballpark Vegan. And in addition to just having that dedicated stand, they just have uh, an amazing variety of different vegan foods. So they've got the cheeseburgers, they've got the Beyond Chicken Strips, Light Life Jumbo Dogs, Chili with Beyond Meat, Beef Crumbles, and they've got these uh, Texas Classics, what we call them. uh, There's a Frito Pie, Vegan Grande Nachos with vegan cheese and beyond meat crumbles it's just that hearty cheesy food that you would expect to find at a ballpark in texas but all vegan i've lived in texas for for a few years they love to eat they love greasy food they love stadiums are as much for the the food as it is for the game you know for football and baseball but texas is known for their outrageous game food. Like they have a thing called the boomstick. Do you know about the boomstick? I'm afraid to know about the boomstick. <laughs> <laughs> the the boomstick. Well, you've heard of a like a a six inch hot dog or a foot long hot dog. Uh huh. They have a two foot long. Oh, hot dog. I've heard of this. Then yes. The $27 foot-long hot dog. And it's no wonder why Globe Life, an insurance company, has the naming rights because you're going to need life (laughs) insurance after you eat their food. But uh, they've got all this. They've got, you know, regular nachos, but not just ordinary nachos, but like, you know, huge nacho portions. And not just a a foot-long hot dog. They have a two-foot-long hot dog. Well, maybe next year they'll cap it off and have the vegan version of that. Yeah. Well, it's just good to know that at the very least, uh, they, uh, you know, as, as much as they like to sort of go big on the normal, greasy, fatty, uh, carnivorous food, they also, you know, tip their cap to the vegans and say, you know, here's some good vegan fare, right? Yeah. In the, in the heart of cattle country, you can find all of the beefy, cheesy foods you want to eat, but you just head to the ballpark vegan instead. You can get them all veganized. Now, I forgot to mention they have one other thing called the MVT, 
Do you know what the MVT is? It's it's the most valuable tamale. Tam- tamale? Yeah, tamale, the most valuable tamale. And it's a two foot long tamale that they serve up on a platter. <laughs> two foot. <laughs> a 24 inch tamale. That's right. Tw- tw- 12 inches a foot, two foot, 20, a 24 inch tamale. Can you imagine that? It's, it's a, it's a hot dog dressed like a tamale that comes with a carrying case and a handle. Well, <laughs> and then, yeah, I, I, they've got to top that. The V's got to stand vegan. The most value, maybe the MVV, the most valuable vegan something or other. Well, maybe, maybe Peter will have to lobby them to make the vegan version of that to, <laughs> to keep their winner spot next year. Yeah. If they want to be number one next year, they're going to have to top that because they're not going to make it just with, what is it you said? What is the most interesting thing that you said they had? What, what was it? The mo- What's the most interesting? The most interesting thing? Yeah. What, what is, what, yeah. What, what is something that would attract you? I think if I went to Globe Life Park, I would really want to try the vegan grande nachos. And that's the vegan cheese and beyond meat crumbles all piled up in there. I, 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 I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But would it top the most valuable tamale? See, there is a vegan most valuable tamale. I'd settle for that. So, Amber, t- so tell me, I, what has the response been to your list? If people said, "Hey, no, you're wrong," you're because you know sports fans like to argue. Oh no, that 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 everyone has a field burger, but these guys. Oh, you didn't. The Oakland A's aren't there. They had a Filipino food truck. They're, they didn't make the top ten this year. Yeah, not quite this year. I mean, all, all we can say is that competition is fierce for the top 10 spot. It's not enough for these ballparks to just have a vegan burger and and think they're they're going to pass with fans these days. They need to have really creative, interesting stuff that's going to keep people coming back and, like you said, get out of their armchairs and come to the park and enjoy some delicious food while, you know, watching their game and and then you know because it's not just peanuts and cracker jack right we we need something more like and here's the thing i it doesn't surprise me that texas texas stadium uh, or the the texas rangers at globe life park have this uh it have the number one spot because you know they went through a phase where they put they put everything in a in a chicken fried type oven so they chicken fry everything bacon oreos corn on the cob so it doesn't surprise me that for vegans they they try to it doesn't sound like they pulled out all the stops but maybe they're getting there maybe next year there's always room for improvement and yeah i i'm thinking we're going to be seeing some more and more ballparks that are just coming up out of nowhere who you know the year before they had nothing on the menu and now they're just seeing how popular it is, how many people are not wanting to eat cheese, they're not wanting to eat meat and you know they need to step it up if they want people uh paying out the big bucks for the concession stands. Well, well tell me one vegan item that is on your wish list that you would love to see. Like to tell you the truth, the uh, the vegan nachos you know, they're at, at, at Globe Life Park, the number one. I mean, that was a, that was a big deal when they introduced it uh, about a year ago. But, you know, the kinds of things that they like to do, they like to do jalapeno bacon dogs and they like to do, uh, a bacon brisket and bologna sandwich that they, uh, they serve on a soft roll that, uh, is like an $18. They call it the, the, the triple B sandwich. So, I mean, this this is still meat eaters heaven or hell because you know there's the indigestion after the ninth inning. But what is a a thing that you as a vegan would love to see on a menu somewhere? I think we could start seeing some more vegan cheesesteaks with actual vegan meat instead of just the the fried veggies and and no cheese or vegan cheese if you're lucky. But yeah, you know, these ballparks, 
if they have some really inventive over the top item, they should make a vegan version of it available. So you can either get the vegan version or the, you know, heart clogging animal <laughs> killing version of it. And, you know, not pull out all any of the stops. Is there something vegan that you'd love to see chicken fried? Maybe that would do it in Texas. Hmm. I'm trying to think. A chicken fried field roast? That that would be pretty cholesterol <laughs> raising. I've seen um vegan chicken fried steak. You know, it's um Oh yes. Yeah. So I, I could see them doing that. But also the desserts too, the Dole Whip, and there's vegan soft serve and twists nowadays. And, you know, so much of the population is uh, either is lactose intolerant or is not consuming cow's milk for ethical reasons. And, you know, just switching over that ice cream dispenser with the, the vegan ice cream mix, you can have vegan soft serve twists nowadays. Well, Amber, thank you very much for this. Uh, a thousand calories later, we've completed mm -hmm. the list. And uh, and so uh, are you going to visit any of these parks yourself this summer? I'm going to try to make it up to T-Mobile Park in Seattle, maybe for vegan night. Yeah, maybe. for And also, hey, look, while you, you know, you can also check out uh, Oracle Park, too, you know, while you're around. Um, they've got that center field garden. It's it's really it's really fun to go to. You could ignore the baseball <laughs> game, and just hang out in the garden. <laughs> I would hate to go to a ballpark just anyway. to get a salad, but it, it might convince me to. <laughs> that's true. You got to pay a ticket to buy your salad. <laughs> that's right. That's the mark of a true right. vegan. Amber Canavan. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. But now you got to work on the gloves. You got to work on the gloves, and I think the ball is still cowhide, right? You and certainly do. We're, we're working on the leather issue every day as well at Vita. PETA's Amber Canavan on PETA's Top 10 Ballparks for Vegan Fair. Check out PETA.org for the list and take action. Go to a game and let the clubs know you want a vegan version of everything. Even that 24-inch tamale hot dog. And that's our program. You know, it must be said that the, the Giants, the San Francisco Giants, though in last place, beat out the L.A. Dodgers on the vegan list. And that's the list that matters to the animals, right? Hey, you can contact us here at PETA.org, or you can find me on Twitter at Emil Amok, that's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K, or on aldef.org slash blog, A-A-L-D-E-F.org slash blog. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on Apple Podcasts, where you can rate and review the show. It helps get the word out about the issues you care about. is provided by Carbon Works. Check them out on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Join us again next time for more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty-free world on the PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo.